in this video, we're going to talk about new information about the GoPro Max and why it's a game changer. We're also going to look at some sample videos of the GoPro Max. We're going to cover the new information about its video and photo resolution, its bitrate, all that stuff. And I'm also going to talk about why its real-time stitching is even better than I thought. Then I'll answer some of your questions such as whether to get the GoPro Hero 8 or the GoPro Max, and whether you should get the GoPro Max Insta360 ONE X or wait for the next Insta360 camera. Let's get started. But first, let's talk about its photo and video resolution. We now have more precise numbers for both photos, photo and video. First, let's talk about photos. As you know, the GoPro Max can shoot either in non-360 or in 360 mode. And for photos, the non-360 resolution is 2704 by 2028 and it's 360 photo resolution is 5760 by 2880 in case you're wondering that 360 resolution is the same as that of the GoPro Fusion it's also a third photo mode called power panel which is a 270 degree panorama and the resolution for that is 4320 by 1440 now let's talk about its video resolution so again there's two modes so for non 360 it can shoot either in 1080 which is 1920 by 1080 or 1440p which is 1920 by 1440 or in other words a four thirds resolution. In either of these non-360 modes the available frame rates are 24, 25, 30, 50 and 60 fps. Now let's talk about the bit rates. So in H.264 the available bit rates for non-360 are 30 mbps or 45 mbps or if you are shooting in 1440 at 50 or 60 fps then the bit rates uh, for H.264 are 60 mbps or 78 mbps. You can also shoot in H.265 in which case the available bit rates are 24 mbps, 36 mbps or for 1440 at 60 fps or 50 fps the bit rate is either 45 mbps or 60 mbps. For 360 the resolution is 5376 by 2688 and if you're wondering why did they say 5.6k that's because GoPro defines each k as uh, 960 instead of 1000. In 360 mode it can only shoot in H.265 it cannot shoot in H.264 and the bit rate for H.265 at 360 mode is 60 mbps. Now how does that to go compare to the GoPro Fusion? Well the GoPro Fusion shoots at H.264 at around 120 Mbps. Now recall that H.265 is about twice as efficient as H.264. So the GoPro Max's 60 Mbps at H.265 is almost the same as the H.264 at 120 Mbps for the GoPro Fusion. So does that mean that the GoPro Fusion and the GoPro Max have the same video quality? Well, we don't know yet because one more variable that we need to know is dynamic range. And you can't tell just by looking at the, the bit rate. I have to compare the two of them side by side. Next new information is about real-time stitching. Now in my previous video, I talked about how this was one of the killer features of the GoPro Max. And I said that it was available for the non-360 mode. Uh, with and with only one lens. Now what I've found out is that you can actually get real-time stitching with stabilization even in the 360 mode. So on GoPro's website there's a page that talks about Max HyperSmooth, the stabilization feature of the GoPro Max. Now in that page it says clearly that you have to be in hero mode uh, in other words the non 360 mode but I found this other press release where it talks about in-camera stitching for 360 photos and videos. So this got me thinking about whether the 360 videos are also stabilized in the camera. And so I asked GoPro and here's the response. So yes, according to this response, GoPro Max has real-time stitching with stabilization in 360 mode. Now please note, this response was only from an anonymous GoPro employee. So there's a chance that it could be wrong. So we got to take it with a grain of salt. But if they're right, this is a total game changer. Because no other 360 camera has that at the consumer level. I mean, you have it for professional cameras that cost $2,500 or more. And now GoPro is making it possible for a camera that costs $500. Now one of the most common questions I got from the previous video is 
whether you should get the Hero 8 or the GoPro Max. Well, let's talk about that. So the Hero 8 has three advantages over the GoPro Max. First of all, you have better video quality. That's because even though the GoPro Hero 8 is quote unquote only 4K, while the Max is 5.6K, the field of view of the GoPro Hero 8 is much smaller. So you have more pixels per degree. Second, Hero 8 has much better slow motion, up to 8x, whereas with the Max, you're limited to 2x. The third advantage of the Hero 8 is that you can use an external microphone. Oh, good morning. Welcome to Taipei. Wow. I'm going to tune back in once we get back down. With the GoPro Max, there's nothing to indicate that you can use an external microphone with it. On the other hand, the Max has its own advantages over the Hero 8. First of all, it's stabilization. Yeah, the Hero 8 has amazing stabilization, but the GoPro Max's stabilization is far better than that of the GoPro Hero 8. You can even turn the camera upside down or point it in any direction and it will remain stable. Not only that, but you can also choose between Max Hyper Smooth and Auto Leveling. Those are two separate features. Max Hyper Smooth will neutralize vibrations, whereas Auto Leveling is choosing whether the horizon remains level in your video. The second advantage of the GoPro Max is the third person view. With the GoPro Max, you can capture a unique third person view, just use it on a selfie stick and it will look like you're shooting with an invisible flying camera or as if you had a cameraman following you around. So that looks really cool. Third advantage of the GoPro Max is that you can shoot without aiming. Just start recording and you can focus on whatever you're doing instead of trying to aim the camera and you can get shots that you can't otherwise get on the non-360 camera such as the GoPro Hero 8. For me as a busy parent, this is the most important reason to get a stabilized 360 camera like the GoPro Max. To show you how amazing a 360 camera can be, here's a video by GoPro Senior Creative Director Abe Kislevitz shot on the GoPro Max. On the left side, you can see how it looks like it was shot by an invisible flying camera. The video on the right is from the same video on the left, but it's reframed to give us a behind the scenes look at how it was shot. It's because of this amazing versatility that I don't mind the lower resolution of the Max compared to Hero 8 or other non-360 cameras. To see what else you can do with the 360 camera, check out this video. I used the Insta360 ONE X, but the Max can also do everything shown in that video. So as you can see, stabilized 360 cameras like the GoPro Max are really cool, but the GoPro Max is not the only one out there. There's also cameras such as the popular Insta360 ONE X. And a lot of you asked, which one should you get? First, let's talk about the GoPro Max's advantages. It has three key advantages. Number one is the large touch screen. So it makes it easy to control the uh, GoPro Max and change the settings. Not only that, but it's probably easier to see the settings when you're out in sunlight with the Insta360 ONE X. When you're in bright sunlight, it's a little bit hard to see the display. It's hard to change the settings. And the other thing is that with the GoPro Max, you can review your photos on the spot. Uh, you won't have to connect them to your phone. Second, the GoPro Max is waterproof even without the case. So that means you won't have to worry about leaving your, your waterproof case behind or sometimes you have the case but you there's a little pebble or a little grain of sand there that compromises its um, integrity and then water comes in and there goes your camera. Now, so with the GoPro Max, you don't ever have to worry about that. And third is probably the most important advantage of the GoPro Max, which is real-time stitching with stabilization. So it means you'll be able to use your photos and videos straight out of the camera, no need to stitch. That's going to save a lot of time for you. Now, the Insta360 ONE X has its own advantages of the GoPro Max. Now, first of all, it's HDR video. Now, this is not just simple tone mapping like you have on many smartphones or even the GoPro Hero 6, 7, and 8. The Insta360 ONE X actually takes two separate exposures per frame of video and then combines them to capture an extra wide dynamic range far greater than what you could capture on a regular camera. 
Second is slow motion. So in 360 mode, the GoPro Max is limited to 30 FPS, but the Insta360 ONE X has two slow motion modes. In addition to 5.7K 30 FPS, it can shoot at 4K 50 FPS or 3K 100 FPS. Not only that, but the Insta360 ONE X app can also interpolate at 1 4th speed to get up to 3K 400 FPS equivalent. And finally is editing. The Insta360 ONE X mobile and desktop apps have a lot of features for editing. So on, for example, on the Insta360 ONE X, you can convert your 360 video to an over capture video with object tracking, or you can use your phone as a virtual camera. What about the GoPro Max? The GoPro Max also has keyframing, but what I don't know yet is whether all those features are going to be available for both desktop and mobile. And we also don't know if it will be available on all platforms, iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows. So we'll just have to wait and see. Another question that many of you asked is whether Insta360 has a new camera around the corner. So the short answer is yes, I'm 99.99% sure that Insta360 is working on a new camera, but I don't think it's coming out anytime soon. Here are three reasons why. Number one, um, in the past, Insta360 has released a camera at around this time frame, from August to October. And it's already mid-October and they haven't said anything yet. So it looks like they're not planning to release a new camera soon. The second reason is they've already released the Insta360 Go just recently. So I don't think they're going to release an, a second camera within such a short time frame. And third, Insta360 is very much aware of the GoPro Max. And if they had a camera that was going to be released soon, then Insta360 could have posted the teaser trailer uh, so that people would wait for that instead of buying the GoPro Max. But they haven't done that, which tells me that even if they're working on the camera right now, it's not coming out anytime soon. So the earliest I think Insta360 would come out probably be January at CES or April at NAB. Now suppose they do come out with a camera, what kind of features can we expect from it? And in terms of resolution, I don't think it's going to be more than 6K. That's because the small sensors like the ones that are used in the Insta360 ONE X and the GoPro Max and GoPro Fusion and other 360 cameras have a maximum resolution of 4K as of October 2019. So um, I don't think they're going to be able to squeeze out any more resolution. Now, the only exceptions to that are either if they use a larger sensor or if they add more sensors. And either way, it's going to make the camera much more expensive and put it in another class. Instead, I think they will focus more on usability. Just like what GoPro did with the Max, I expect that Insta360 is also working on real-time stitching with stabilization. And if GoPro was able to pull it off, I think Insta360 can pull it off too. Now, finally, if you're thinking about getting the GoPro Max, should you buy it directly from GoPro or should you get it from Amazon? If you buy it from GoPro right now, there's a promo. You can get a free 64 gig micro SD card. Now, on the other hand, with Am if you buy it from Amazon, you can get a lower cost replacement plan. So GoPro's replacement plan is cost $5 per month, which comes out to $60 a year. And if you need to replace your camera, there's going to be a deductible. I don't know the deductible yet for GoPro Max, but for the Fusion, it was $139. Now with Amazon, uh, they also have a replacement plan when you if you buy the camera from them. And their plan costs uh, $57 for three years total. And there's no deductibles. So if you want to get a replacement plan with your camera, then uh, you can save a little bit of money buying it from Amazon instead of GoPro. So if you want the latest info, then check out this link to my review and resource page for the GoPro Max. Thanks, and I'll see you in 360.